Are you trying to game on a significantly underpowered machine or just a, a very old one that doesn't handle newer titles all that well and you're looking to, to upgrade but potentially in a bit of a unique manner? Well, the, the product that actually isn't here because it's entirely based in the cloud is Shadow. It is a sort of subscription service where you get a virtual machine in the cloud that is a full Windows machine but they're mostly marketing it towards uh, kind of you guys, the, the gamers in the audience, especially Especially ones that do have older underpowered hardware that can't necessarily play the, the most up-to-date titles uh, but are still looking to do so. So um, let's take a look at it. Now in this video I want to cover a few things. First of all what Shadow is, what they offer, what the pricing is and that sort of thing. Then what you would use it for and, and why you would consider it. Then the actual performance, what it's actually like to use and potentially some other use cases as well as whether I would personally use it myself. Let's start off with what it has to offer. Now Shadow itself, as I mentioned, is a effectively just a Windows virtual machine that you pay £26.95 a month for. It is a non-locking subscription service, so you pay month to month and obviously it ends up being a little over £300 a year, but Obviously, it is a month-to-month -month thing, so if you're just done with it, if you, you know, end up getting a new computer in a couple months' time, you've only paid the, you know, couple months that you've used it for, and it's not, you know, a 12-month contract or anything like that. The virtual machine that they offer is an 8-core Xeon. Now, that means that it's not the highest clock speeds available, but it's still an 8-core, which is relatively decent for things like rendering performance, so I'll come into that later. You get 12 gigabytes of RAM, you get 250 gigabytes of storage, and you get a G text 1080 equivalent. Now that equivalent part is basically the same as the Xeon in that they're both likely uh, you know, multi-core, so for example the, the graphics card side is likely something like an Nvidia Tesla card that is then shared between the virtual machines, so it's an equivalent, you still get the same amount of horsepower, it's just not actually that, you know, it's not just GTX 1080s in a rack. Now this service, similar to uh, even things like the older OnLive subscription service, are basically a, a service where you have a a very powerful machine in a server farm that then encodes the video display that you're trying to get in H.264 or H.265 and then streams that to your PC and then it takes your inputs from your PC and sends that back to the server and then you know does your actions that you want it to do. Now this unlike OnLive is a full uh, kind of Windows VM so you can use this for anything you want there's there's no restrictions on you know what you can install or anything like that but they are targeting to Targeting, targeting it more towards gamers, which is uh, something I, I kind of want to cover here. The service lets you pick the bitrate you want, and it goes from anywhere between 5 megabits per second up to 50 currently, although apparently there is a beta feature, or a feature that should be coming soon to allow custom bit rates. I would mention that in my experience, the higher bit rates, even though my actual internet connection works perfectly fine and is a 70 megabit per second connection, uh, that like real world actually comes through as a 70 meg connection. The 50 meg uh, megabit bit rate didn't seem to perform all that well with my connection, so uh, dropping it down to 30 was a much better experience, and for things like 1080p gaming, it was more than fine for me. So why would you get this sort of service instead of just building your own PC? Well, if you have, say, an older laptop, for example, that really can't run games, but obviously you can't necessarily afford the straight up upfront cost of, say, a new laptop or a new desktop that can be, uh, even for, relatively decent but still sort of 1080p gaming machines in the six seven hundred pound range this service lets you pay that just uh, 20 run up 27 pounds a month for what is essentially a relatively high-end gaming PC now of course this is never going to replace a, a full PC in terms of things like uh, competitive FPS gaming for you know your CS goes or whatever uh, and of course it's not going to be the perfect gaming experience you can't get things like high refresh rate at least at this point anyway uh, and otherwise you know there's, there's still a few limitations, uh, things like you're not able to directly access devices that you have on your local PC. So for example, uh, and as I'll talk about more in a second, if you have say an SD card full of video footage that you want to edit on the clouds uh, on Shadow, uh, the Shadow VM can't see that SD card and you have to upload those files to another uh, you know, cloud storage service to then pass those files to your VM. But what Shadow does excel at is more the sort of single player type game, which for things like say Witcher 3, 
3, you're even playing through the GTA 5 campaign, you're going to have a pretty decent experience with overall if your internet connection is good enough. Uh, for me, the uh, even the 30 megabit per second bit rate with GTA 5 did have some hiccups and stutters. I don't know whether this is the internet connection side or whether that's for uh, your, their encoder side or the gameplay side. I'm not too sure on that. But uh, overall, my, my general gameplay experience on it was pretty decent. Even playing things like CSGO was actually all right, uh, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for, as I said, the sort of competitive or even maybe online gameplay, but offline with bots was still generally fine, even at 30 megabits per second. There was definitely some pr compression artifacts in especially things like CSGO, where you're quickly moving around, but with, uh, you know, kind of things, as I said, like uh, if you're playing The Witcher, if you're playing uh, GTA 5 offline, potentially even GTA 5 online, because that's not necessarily as fast-paced, action time based um, then I think you're probably gonna have a, a decent enough time with it again big asterisk if your internet connection is good enough. So now you know that it performs pretty well, especially on like single player gaming, again, if your internet connection is good enough, but can it be used for anything else? Well, it's a, as I said, it's a full Windows VM, so you can install anything you want with it. Now there is a, an asterisk that, as I said, you only have 250 gigabytes of storage, and I did ask uh, Blade if they were planning on doing any upgrade options, or you know if you could pay a little bit extra for more storage or more RAM or uh, that sort of thing, and they said that they're not planning on doing that, uh, at least at all right now uh, besides their regular sort of hardware upgrades so for example when Nvidia launches their new line of graphics cards the new 1180 or 2080 or whatever they end up calling it will be the graphics card horsepower that they offer there as a sort of free upgrade but otherwise in terms of things like storage and RAM they seem to be a pretty fixed metric right now. Now that does mean that when I was trying things like DaVinci Resolve besides as I mentioned the, the annoyance with things like uh, there's no f uh, file transfer protocol that seems to be built in so uh, if you want to, say, edit videos on it as maybe a, a mobile workstation, for example, which seemed like a really good idea, it made it pretty difficult because you had to uh, upload the, the files that you want to edit on your shadow box, uh, obviously only 230-ish uh, gigabytes at a time to a, another cloud service and then download those onto your local shadow box to then be able to uh, edit those you know, on, on the service. Now, obviously, besides the storage configuration kind of limitation, actually 12 gigs of RAM was also a bit of a limitation because when you're working with the, the big 4K files that I work with on a regular basis, I regularly run out of my 32 gigs of RAM on things like Premiere and After, After Effects, so that's uh, a bit of an annoyance. I would also mention that that 8-core Xeon, well, it is 8 cores, the clock speed is pretty low, so at even something like a Ryzen uh, 2600, even, even just completely stock, is likely a good bit faster than that 8-core Xeon in terms of things like rendering and even again with a you know relatively low-end video card you're probably still going to have a better overall experience in both use case for just being able to plug in your SD card and edit straight away as opposed to obviously having to upload the files and then download them to your you know VM but also again just for the raw performance. So I think this is a good time to talk about if I would use it personally. Now for me would I replace my rig with this? Would I put this on my desk effectively? And the answer is no, not at all. This service really doesn't make any sense for someone like me, but that's kind of the point. I already have all of this hardware and all of the PCs that I have kicking about. It's not for someone like me, it's for someone who has that older laptop or that you know ancient desktop that they bought 10, 15 years ago that's only just clinging to life and you know has, has had a few upgrades here and there, but you know, for example, can't have a, a decent graphics card upgrade without upgrading you know the CPU and the motherboard and the power supply and all that sort of stuff, and so you really need a new system. For someone who has that sort of setup, this could be interesting. Now, of course, there is a little bit of a, a, a kind of tick in my mind that paying that sort of 300 pounds a year for a service and you don't get any hardware you have yourself can be a little bit of a risk obviously if the service goes under then you've just spent you know potentially say you, you've run three years of this you spent a thousand pounds on a service that you end up with sort of nothing at the end but at the same time you will in theory anyway get free hardware upgrades so your performance will keep increasing over time you don't have to pay any extra for that um, but again it's, uh, it's sort of initial investment versus staggered investment and 
yeah, you, you can assess it in your own way. Now, I would mention as one thing that I haven't actually covered here, they do also offer their own shadow box, which has basically an AMD APU inside. Uh, that is all that it seems to have. It's just a, a small system that you can hook up to your TV or whatever. Uh, you can either buy it or rent it from them for uh, a couple of extra, I think it's like eight pounds a month extra if you're renting it, or I think about hundreds uh, or so pounds uh, if you're buying it outright, um, and allows you to uh, use the shadow app directly on it so if you did want to use that and just completely bin all of your other systems if they really can't work that well then that is an option now otherwise i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below do you have an older system and this seems like a fantastic option for you or are you someone who has a decent system and this makes absolutely no sense for or are you actually in the camp where you have that older system but you don't see any reason for having this and you may as well build your own system i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below i'd, I'd be really interested to, to have a discussion with you so do leave them down below. Now if you want to check out the Shadow app, I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can check out pricing because they are uh, they do offer the service in multiple countries. There are some countries, I believe like the USA, that they don't offer uh, the actual Shadow box for as opposed to the full uh, you know virtual machine service, but uh, you can check the, the website out for all of the location data and, and things like that for where it works for you. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions about the service or anything else, leave those in the comments down below I'll uh, get back to you as soon as I can if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday Wednesday Friday and Thursday live stream basis then check out the links in the description down below there's a patreon link where you can support me directly or you can also support me through the Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links which massively help me out when you use those when buying from those places if you're new to the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button and check out the other videos over here for you otherwise thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video